synthesize the food they need to stay alive. This begins with a two-part process known as photosynthesis. The light reactions, or part one, use radiant energy from the sun to photoelectrically generate ATP and NADPH. The Calvin cycle, or part two, uses those products plus CO2 to make a sugar or saccharide from which the plant's food is derived. Follow along and you will see how the sugar is made cyclically. You'll see just how this process is done independently of the sun. The Calvin Cycle will synthesize sugar from carbon dioxide over and over. Spins and spins, finishing what the light begins. The Calvin Cycle takes place last in the stroma of the chloroplast, the fluid-filled matrix that's contained outside the thylakoid membrane. The cycle begins initially with a sugar called RUBP, a starting compound which contains five carbon atoms in its chain. The RUBP must bind to carbon dioxide or CO2, so the plant takes in carbon dioxide from the surrounding air outside. The CO2 is in a gaseous state and diffuses through the leaf stomate, then moves to the stroma where it will be fixated into RUBP. Rubisco, an anabolic enzyme, helps CO2 and RUBP bind. This is known as carbon fixation the first phase of sugar formation. A six carbon compound now is formed, but it's unstable and doesn't last long. It splits in half and generates two PGAs, or phosphoglycerates. The Calvin cycle will synthesize sugar from carbon dioxide over and over. Spins and spins, finishing what the light begins. Now I will explain to you ATP molecules give phosphate to the PGAs of phosphoglycerate. Bisphosphoglycerates are produced, which NADPH will reduce. The bisphosphoglycerates now are changed, and they lose phosphate from the carbon chains. This reaction therefore provides phosphoglyceraldehydes. This is a complex chemical name, so we'll call them PGAL just the same. Or we can call them alternately glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P. Several byproducts are also derived as the G3Ps are synthesized. ADP and it also creates NADPH. DP plus and phosphates. All of these can be used when the light reactions take place again. The G3Ps contain three carbon atoms in their chains. Count up the carbons one by one. Six carbon atoms is the sum. Those carbon atoms, however, will be utilized to make our UBP. More G3Ps must be obtained to build the six carbon glucose chain. So the Calvin cycle spins back to back six times in all, to be exact, yielding in totality 36 carbons via 12 G3Ps. Two molecules of G3P leave the cycle and bind chemically, yielding glucose E6H12O6 from the carbon that Rubisco fits. Now let's take a look at phase three, the regeneration of our UVP. The 10 molecules of G3P are recycled enzymatically. They're rearranged and phosphorylated and our UVP is regenerated. We're back to where we started from and the cycle's ready for another run. More G3P will be synthesized when the plant takes in carbon dioxide. So photosynthesis parts one and two help make G3P. And when they do, plants can make glucose their major fuel and other organic molecules.